to another edition of BeerAmerica.tv. Today we've got uh, a couple of winter beers because we're keeping with the theme of uh, Christmas, holidays, Thanksgiving, and what would really be good uh, in the colder weather. And we have a special guest with us today, uh, Owen Ogletree. Hi. Owen, a little bit about yourself, please. Well, I am, uh, I I'm the editor of uh, ClassicCityBrew.com. I run the Classic City Brew Fest, the Atlanta Cascale Tasting. I uh, write the Georgia column for Southern Brew News and National Beer Judge, so just so you just really So you like beer? A little bit, yeah. So good. So right, right. So <laughs> you're, I'm, I'm going to say you're qualified to be sitting here okay. with John Pinkerton anyway. Very nice. That's definitely me, but uh, John Pinkerton. I'm not sure what that says really, but. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, today we're trying uh, Weyerbacher Winter Ale, <clears throat> uh, which is from Easton, Pennsylvania, from the Weyerbacher Brewing Company. And uh, I've never had this before. Have you had this before? Never had their winter, winter ale. I've had lots of their other beers before. Well, well explain a little bit about Weyerbacher then, what you kind of know about them. It, it's a great Pennsylvania uh, brewery, it's, uh, a craft brewery. Mm -hmm. they, they really make extreme beers, lots of high gravity beers, lots of beers with uh, extra hops. Um, you're rarely going to find a Weyerbacher beer that just isn't over the top with flavor. They're just extremely flavorful beers that are extremely well done. They're clean, they're well crafted. Um, and, and there's a lot of effort that goes into making a great recipe. So the, these beers are just amazing. And John, have you are familiar? I actually haven't had this one. Um, I tried the, the double Simcoe at the Savannah Craft yeah, Beer Fest yeah. for the first time, and I was really impressed. It was a, I think it was the first Weyerbacher beer I'd ever had, mm -hmm. and it really kind of knocked my socks off. That's up. an it's imperial IPA with just extra malt, extra hops just everywhere. It's just explosive Slowly flavors. Yeah. With hop character there. Right. So I'm kind of hoping this is hoppy. Well, but, Going with the winter winter theme, it probably won't. I don't won't think be, it will be. Well, let's open it up and, okay. and find out about it. And we're drinking out of snifters, which is not uncommon uh, to drink a good craft beer out of a snifter. Really, the the, the aromas mm. come right up into your nose. And, and what are you what are you guys smelling right off the top? Big malt for sure. Big malt. Right out of the Lots gate. Lots of malt, toffee, caramel. Nice dark grains. What was the ABV on this? I don't know. It's very rare that a Weyerbacher beer doesn't have a ABV, but the label does not give an indication. 5%? 5.1. 5.1. .1. Thank okay. you, David Little. 5.6. 5.6. Oh, 5.6. Okay. Sorry, that had was five supposed to be 5.6. 5.1, but he was adding. <laughs> Sounds <inside>. like. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's a pretty light gravity beer for Weyerbacher. Well, and it's wow. nice. It's got Real kind of a, a little bit of a smoke when you get it on the power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, almost like a... Uh, flatbread cracker kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, real, really, like high-end kind of toast. Right, right. Mm. And, and, and these winter wow. beers were made popular in England um, when in the winter time for the holidays, uh, the English breweries would just make a really stronger version of a normal beer, just with more malt, more warming alcohol so that you could enjoy it in front of a roaring fire and have it with rich foods. And, and this beer kind of goes against the grain. It's a little light and refreshing, but it, yet it has a lot of rich malt complexity to it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm definitely partial to that, that whole notion that um, when you have a, a beer that's very malty, I like there to be a little bit of brightness there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We brightness. talk a lot in yeah. our, these uh, video blogs about that dynamic mm -hmm. character, and I, I think it's very important for uh, especially a beer that has the potential to have a big heavy bottom end Mm -hmm. to uh, have some little notes in there that are going to uh, kind of help keep it interesting. Right, in palate. right. And a nice malty beer, I think, would go well with uh, a turkey or a ham or that sort. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, this would be great yeah. with Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner. Or sitting by the fire. I mean, it just kind of the first thing I felt like, gosh, you know, I'm just hanging out yeah. you know, on the holidays yeah, with the family. We're roasting on the open fire. <laughs> we'll get there, yes. But it's, right. uh, it's a very nice beer. Indeed. And I, yeah. and I also, you know, the transitional training wheel type beers that we talk about as well, I think for somebody who's not really into the craft beer or an extreme beer, would you call this an extreme beer? Because no. it doesn't, no, yeah, right. I would, it doesn't feel no. extreme to me at all. I mean, it, it's just very nice. But it's a very really nice. well-balanced, yeah. complex, malty ale. Absolutely. That I, has a great balance of the fruity esters mm -hmm. and the malt and the dark malts. And, and the hops are very restrained, which is unusual for Weyerbacher, but... Uh, but uh, the hops are there for balance, but the malt is the real mm -hmm. star of this show, I think. The, the, I'm glad you brought up the whole approachability thing, yeah. because um, it, 
being being in, in a brew pub, mm -hmm. a lot of what we do is, is try to bring people over, you know, uh, kind of the educational end of it. And uh, right. one of my favorite things, honestly, is to take people who don't necessarily like, or, or, or they don't they don't think they like dark beer. It's kind right. of scary to them. Is to kind of show them that okay, dark beer doesn't necessarily equal extremely bitter beer because everybody. <clears throat> and again, not to bash Guinness, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but it's a it's an example of a it's one example of a dark beer right. that also happens to be very bitter. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think by and large, people have this idea that that dark beer is is bitter and thick and heavy. Right, right, um, right. Which Guinness is not really, but I think people uh, misinterpret that bitterness as being heavy because mm -hmm. it just sticks to your palate. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this beer would actually be uh, fairly approachable for those who don't necessarily like dark beer because they could they can they can get some of that that dark roasty character. Right. Um, I mean, if you I mean here's some qualifications for liking a dark beer. Do you like chocolate? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, do you like coffee? You know, not necessarily everybody likes chocolate, like likes coffee, but right. um, I mean, if, if you're already ready for some of those characters, sure. then you're ready for a beer like this, because mm -hmm. this is not uh, overly bitter, um, and it's just, it, it's got some pleasant flavors. It, it sure does. It, I think it just takes a lot of people um, uh, a, a little shift of uh, their, their, their brain of, of thinking of, of beer as being light and yellow and fizzy. Mm -hmm. You know, if they would not think of this as light, yellow, fizzy beer and expect that, that they would really enjoy this, because like you said, they already like coffee, mm -hmm. and they like uh, you know toast, and they like uh, and they like caramelized foods and, mm -hmm. and, and things. And this, this beer just goes right along with that. Um, I was going to mention too. What's that? All wine is white. That's a good statement. way, that's yeah, a good exactly way to put it. Right. Uh, I was noticing earlier you were doing the the cupping thing, which uh -huh. is uh, the idea of, of getting it a little bit warmer. Just warming and up. as this is this beer is warming up, uh, I did want to point out that. Um, the definitely. flavors pop more. Yeah, that, definitely, right? mm -hmm. definitely, mm -hmm. and, and that's characteristic of all beers. Uh, now, not all beers taste better when they're warmer. Uh, some mm -hmm. of those beers are served ice cold because no. they just don't really taste that good. You wouldn't want to warm up and, and sniff your your really light American lager because they don't improve when they warm up. Mm -hmm. Indeed, but this definitely you're definitely getting some more uh, malt mm -hmm. character. Mm -hmm. Now, well, one last thing before we close. Yes, I, I did. I, I I just can't help but do this. Um, you know, normally with Owen. The shoes on the other foot here, so I'm I'm taking a great deal of uh, mm -hmm. enjoyment out of uh, being in a position to, to interview. Right. Usually Owen. I'm interviewing you, so it's kind of a, right. it's kind of a, a neat thing. Right, it's a sagging again. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the mic's okay. sagging. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> what, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Do you want some pliers? Oh, well, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Yeah, so it's just it's just kind of a neat switch. Uh, and, the it's game fun. Here. and I'm glad you're sitting in with us. And I Absolutely. think, you know, uh, there's a lot of beer writers and there's a lot of websites that write about beer. And I think what, what we're trying to do is to kind of show a little bit and take advantage of the web and, and talk a little mm -hmm. bit about more in a more social kind of way. Um, and that's kind of what really what this site is all about. So, Owen, thank you for, for sitting in with us today. Thanks I for really having appreciate me. It's it. been it a really pleasure. It really is nice. Um, Very nice. And if you've noticed, we're not at Moon River. Uh, we've changed venues a little bit. We'll be back at Moon River. We'll be doing other things. We are at a new bar in Savannah, Georgia called The Distillery. And what's unique about this bar, I think John has Moon River, which is the only uh, uh, bar that brews their own beer mm -hmm. in Savannah. I mean, it, really right. in the whole region. And I think this bar is the only bar that serves, they have 21 taps of American craft beer. I mean, there's in Savannah, that's a big deal. In most major cities, that's kind of become more mm -hmm. commonplace. So we've decided to blog from uh, Moon River as well as the distillery. And I think the distillery easily right now has the best beer selection in, mm -hmm. in the whole city, so. Oh, by far, I think yeah. it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. They've, they've done a beautiful job. Dedicated yeah. to craft beer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they've welcomed us and we appreciate it. So, um, so that's it for this edition of BeerAmerican.tv. Uh, if you want to, any questions, get a hold of me. Uh, I'm Paul at BeerAmerica.tv and... Pink at BeerAmerica.tv. Pink at BeerAmerica.tv. And you can also uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Um, and uh, you know, keep tabs of what we're doing because we'd always like to hear from you. So, Owen, thank you. Uh, thank you. John, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Indeed. And David, thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Thank you, David. Uh,